Ramadan is here. Oh, hurry up, change yourself in your days. In this life, are only just a few. Do a deep pray fast. This time couldn't be your last. Don't think tomorrow is promised to you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate and the most merciful. All praises are due to Allah. All praises are due to Allah, the one who created the heavens and the earth and all that is in between, and none of it moves except by His will and His knowledge. All praises are due to Allah, the one who rolls the day into the night and the night into the day. All praises are due to Allah, the one who gives life and then takes it away whenever He wills. All praises are due to Allah, the lawmaker, the legislator, the one who sends down His laws from above the seven heavens and then orders his creation to obey and to follow them. And I bear witness that there is no deity of worship except for Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. May peace and blessings be upon him and upon his followers and upon his family. My dear brothers and sisters, a very warm and special Ramadan greetings to you. Ramadan Kareem, Ramadan Mubarak, my brothers and sisters, wherever you are around the world, and I love you all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're well and truly into the last 10 nights, the last 10 nights of this blessed month. Ya Allah, make, it, make these 10 nights help us to be of those who find the Laylat al Qadr, the night of power, Ya Allah. Make us of those who receive the rewards that is greater than a thousand months worship, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease the sufferings of our brothers and sisters who are feeling the pains, who are suffering throughout this month of Ramadan and beyond. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift their hardships, to lift their hardships, Ya Allah, and to make this month, the month of Ramadan, a month of victory. A month of victory for Islam and for the believers and a month of victory even against our own selves against our own desires, so that we are of those who are able to make the changes that we need to make to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, do you know of something that is more powerful than a bullet and stronger than a sword? That is the words. The words that we use, my brothers and sisters. The words that we choose to come out of our mouth. Many scholars say that the, the words that we say is the reflection of our hearts. If the words that we say are beautiful, then that means that our hearts are beautiful inside. But if the words that we say are bad, are evil, are rotten, then that means that's a reflection that our hearts are also rotten, my brothers and sisters. The Prophet ﷺ advised us, advised us to speak good only. Nothing else. Speak good or remain silent. As the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ يَسْمُتْ Whoever believes in Allah and the last day, then speak good or remain silent. Speak good, my brothers and sisters. This is part of our iman. Whoever believes in Allah and the last days. This means to have full Iman. To have full Iman, it is not enough that we are believers, we are praying, we are fasting, but then we are swearing. Also we are cheating with our mouths, we are telling lies. We are using our, our, our words in a manipulative manner to try and gain money from people, to try and cheat people out of their pockets for all of this is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. What the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said is speak good or nothing at all. Imagine that my brothers and sisters. That everything that comes out of your mouth is good. 
or nothing at all. In fact, one of the teachers that I had in my university was an old man, rahimahullah, he's now dead. Yani may Allah have mercy upon him, an Iraqi. And he told me once, which affected me so much, was that in his classes, that they had a special class that was teaching people how to remain silent. So they would sit in the class for 45 minutes without any speaking, without anything. Just sitting there training themselves to remain silent. This is how important it is for a believer, my brothers and sisters. Sometimes we get carried away. Sometimes we, we, we speak without thinking. And that is the worst. That is the worst situation. When we just begin speaking and speaking without thinking about what we are going to say. One of the great scholars here said that he thinks a thousand times before he says a word. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la yuhib al jahl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love the, the, the words that are bad. The words that are bad, my brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, inna Allah ya'murukum bil adli wal ihsan. Verily, Allah orders you with righteousness, with fairness and ihsan. What is ihsan? Ihsan, my brothers and sisters, is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if, as if you can see Allah, but know that, he, that you cannot see Him. So know that Allah sees you. So ihsan is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as if you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. Watching you every moment. Watching every word that you say. Watching everything that, you, that, everything that you're saying. Recording it. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, we fall into that error. We fall into the error that we don't realize. And we tell lies. We swear. One of the worst things these days is the swearing from the youth. Is that it has become so easy because of the television. The television and the movies. Even you find people from different countries who it's not their language yet they know how to swear in American. They know how to swear in English. But they don't know anything else. But they know how to swear. Subhanallah. Wallahi my brothers and sisters. Know that a man in a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he has said that verily a man will speak a word that he does not see harmful and it will drag him it will drag him 70 seasons into the hell fire 70 seasons for a word that he did not see was harmful something that he thought was easy maybe donkey maybe he called somebody a donkey is this a bad word yes it's an insult the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was of those who never insulted anybody. In fact, when he was insulted, he would just be very calm. In fact, it is narrated that one day a, a tribe of Jews, Jewish people, were going along and they said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sam Alaikum. And this word Sam, not Salam Alaikum, but Sam. This word Sam means death. And they said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sam Alaikum. They were making fun of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered wa alaykum but then Aisha radiyallahu anha who was next Aisha got very angry from her love and her zeal for the deen and she said wa alaykum sam wa la'natullah and upon you is death and also the curse of Allah what did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam do he took her he said ya Aisha ya Aisha i have not been Sent to destroy the people, but I have been sent as a mercy. But Aisha said, but didn't you hear what they said? They said to you, Sam. The Prophet ﷺ said, and I said to them, Wa alaykum. For the manners of the believer, my brothers and sisters, the manner of the believer is the one that he speaks well in all of his speech. He speaks which is good or he remains silent. And this is something that is not easy to do. Remaining silent. Sometimes you find people think that you're shy. But in fact, you're practicing the hadith of the Prophet 
Sometimes you'll be in a group and people will be starting to make riba, one of the worst dangers of the tongue. Wallahi, the tongue, my brothers and sisters, the tongue cuts like a knife and it will place you in the hellfire if you are not careful of it. Hold on to your tongues. Hold on to your tongues, my brothers and sisters. Wallahi, it is better for you to hold the tongue than to enter into the hellfire for 70 seasons. 70 seasons in the hellfire just for one word. One word, my brothers and sisters. Even today, if we look at Ibn Subqi, one of the, one of the scholars of the Shafi Madhab, his name was Ibn Subqi. And his, he had a son, uh, he had a father whose name was Subqi as well. And this one day they were walking along and they were righteous people, righteous, from righteous homes. And one day they were walking along and they saw a dog. And the boy said to him, Ya Ibn Kalb. Ya Ibn Kalb. This word Ibn Kalb could be translated as son of dog. And, and you know what it means in, in, in English, son of dog. And he said this to a dog. It was to a dog. And his father said to him, don't say this. Don't speak to the dog like this. For a believer, he speaks sweet. Even a dog, even though he's a dog, you're not allowed to say to him, Ya Ibn Kalb. You're not allowed to say that. This is the manners of the believer. Unless, unless you're seriously talking to the dog. But if you're using it in a way of, of isteza, of a way of slandering people, then this is not permitted, my brothers and sisters. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, this, this, this era that we're living in today is an era where people have lost their shyness. You find television stations, television stations spending a whole hour or two hours on slandering one person. And often it is the people who have beards. Often it is the people who are from the Salihin, from the righteous people. And these people have no manners, who don't know anything about manners. In fact, they don't even pray, most of them. And yet they are slandering the people of khair. The people who have adab, the people who have manners. And yes, we are patient. We are patient because that is how our Prophet ﷺ taught us. But no, you who is slandering those who are the people of religion, the people who are salih, the people who are righteous. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be of them. Those who are slandering of them know that, you, that, that those words that you are saying will place you in the hellfire. You will be dragged along your noses. Dragged upon your noses in the hellfire. For speaking like this about another brother. Speaking in this situation. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, it is this type of behavior. These types of, of, of words that leads to wars. Many wars start from just a few words. Just a few words that somebody said carelessly, not believing in it, not, not knowing what he was talking about, but he said it just to hurt his feelings. And this is not permissible. In fact, my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran not to have secrets, not to be secretive. When I mean secretive, a tanaji. What means a tanaji? Tanaji is when, like the hadith says, that if you are three, لا تناجي, إث, لا تناجي واحد which means or كما قال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم in this hadith which means that if there is three people together do not break off into two and start whispering whispering amongst each other why? because this person will think that you are talking about him and in fact he may in fact you may be talking about him or you may not but this has hurt his feelings and this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. And this is the act of who? Of the hypocrites. The hypocrites were those who used to do this. Why did they do it? To make the sahaba feel sad. To make the sahaba feel left out. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited this. In the Quran and also in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. 
يا ايها الذين امنوا اذا تناجيتم فلا تتناجوا بالاثم والعدوان فلا تتناجوا بالاثم والعدوان ومعصيه الرسول وتناجوا بالبر والتقوى واتقوا الله واتقوا الله الذي اليه تحشرون الله سبحانه وتعالى says in this verse all you who believe that if you are to tanaji if you are to have secrets do not do it in a manner that is on on disobedience to Allah do not do it that will have sin that will bring you sin but you are allowed to do it in a way that will bring you close to Allah so it is okay if you are saying to your brother brother remember remember Allah don't forget to pray my brother if you're whispering that to your brother don't forget to pray my brother then this is okay if you're calling your brother brother let's go and listen to the Quran for a while let's go to this this lesson and let's listen to this lesson for all of this is fine but the the, the tanaji this maharish this thing where people are, are are slandering others slandering others because of they look often this happens you find it amongst the the muslims and the shaitan he said that he will that he gave up on trying to make us commit shirk but he will try to cause discord between us and this is how he tries to cause discord between us my brothers and sisters by these words that are coming out of our mouths and often you will find brothers getting upset people even in the masjid even in the masjid sometimes some of the worst arguments come from what this is the shaitan the shaitan trying to divide us as an ummah innam al mu'minuna ikhwah verily the believers are a brotherhood a brotherhood my brothers and sisters there's no such thing as borders in islam we are a brotherhood whether if our brother in syria is in pain then we are with him if our brother in south africa is in pain then we are with him this is the brotherhood of islam and that type of speaking that type of uh, fighting with the words is what disunites the umma and it is something that is not loved by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is not something that a muslim should do in fact if he comes across it he should do one of two things he should either tell them that this is haram what you are doing and what you are saying and fear allah and may allah guide you or he should walk away and have nothing to do with it because allah says that the one who is with them that he is of them he is of them would you like to be of those who are entering into the fire and having their noses dragged through the fire on the day of judgment or after the day of judgment wallahi brothers and sisters i don't think any of us would love that so it is upon us as believers my brothers and sisters to try our best to keep away from this evil talk this filth and the best way to do that is if it's if it happens to be coming from televisions which it does these days you are free to to get rid of it delete it delete them delete them from your life because you are of those who want to go to paradise you are of those who want to make it to paradise if they are spreading these lies if they are speaking evil then they are nothing but hypocrites hypocrites and they will be in the depths of hell and if you are with them listening to them then you will be with them as well brothers and sisters will take a short break and will return just after these messages inshallah ramadan is ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu 
تتناجيتم فلا تتناجوا فلا تتناجوا بالإثم والعدوان ومعصية الرسول وتناجوا بالبر والتقوى واتقوا الله الذي إليه تحشرون رمضان Do your part, a slogan often heard, but rarely implemented. We need to make sure that we are from those people who are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in knowledge. Doing our part for Islam needs both knowledge and action. You don't have to be able to present the whole of Islam, but at least you have to make sure that what you tell the people is what you know. Do your part with Muhammad Tim Humble in Ramadan only on Huda TV. <laughs>
but to be dragged upon your nostrils. And we're not talking once, we're talking forever dragged upon your nostrils. That will be your life in the, hell, in, in the afterlife. That you'll be dragged upon your nostrils. Except for those who watch out for this. Those who, who protect their lisan, they protect their tongues. And it is related that Hassan, Hassan used to remain very silent and, he used to, and they asked him why. And he said, because when I speak, it cuts like a knife. Subhanallah. So this is how we should do it, my brothers and sisters. Try to keep away from that evil talk. And we have a report tonight, inshallah. We have a video uh, talking about this subject. So let's take a look at that video now, inshallah. Ramadan is here. Musliman je muslimanu brat, ne nanosi mu nepravdu, ne uskraćuje mu njegova prava i ne ponižava ga. Čovjeku je dovoljno zlato što ni podaštava brata muslimana. Ko pomogne svome bratu muslimanu u nevolji, Allah će njemu pomoći u njegovoj nevolji. Ko otkloni nedaću jednog muslimana, Allah će mu otkloniti jedno od njegovih nedača na sudnjem danu. A ko prikrije nedostatke, mahane jednog muslimana, Allah će prikriti njegove na sudnjem danu. Riječi su poslanika Muhammeda alaihi salam. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. Uh, beautiful video, I think. Uh, very relevant for the times and caught out, red-faced. Uh, that, that's how it is uh, sometimes. And imagine red-faced in the hellfire, even worse. Uh, and sometimes we just let it slip. Uh, it just happens to slip. Uh, brothers and sisters, we'll start by opening up the telephone lines for tonight. Uh, we have two lines happening. Uh, the first telephone number that we have tonight, uh, which will appear on your screen there, is 002. Zero one zero zero two four six four five eight three, 
and the other one is 002-011-2500-8679, and the lines are open, ready for your calls, and Jazakum uh, khair, brothers and sisters, uh, we had a massive amount of uh, people sending through the Facebook messages, uh, asking questions through the Facebook yesterday, uh, I spent... Uh, well after Fajr trying to answer all of your questions, uh, there's still a few pending, so inshallah we'll try to get them to you. Uh, but keep sending through. If I can't get them through uh, before uh, Eid even, uh, just don't think that we've forgotten because we'll look at them all and we'll try to get them back. Uh, but uh, of course it does take a lot of time and when there is a lot. So, uh, But jazakallah khair. Wallahi, uh, it, it's really amazing. Uh, and uh, good news. There was a sister. Uh, okay, let's let's take this call first, and we'll get to that. Sister Moon from the UAE. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Sir, I wanted to ask you a question. That uh, uh, usually we control our tongue, but at the same time, our heart keeps on replying to that person. You know, it's very difficult to control our thoughts and our heart. So sometimes we are silent. Uh, I'm not replying, but our heart and our mind is constantly replying to that person from internally and we cannot shut down our brain and heart at that time. It's, it becomes very difficult, especially with elders. I, I don't know how to get over with this problem. Okay, sister. So what you're saying is that uh, somebody upsets you and uh, or, or you know somebody's lying and you know, how can we control our heart and our tongue at the same time? Is that what you're asking me? Okay, inshallah. I believe that's what the sister said. Uh, it takes practice. Uh, it's not something that uh, happens uh, without... Uh, this is part of jihad and nafs, part of fighting the desires and the souls. Uh, we desire to, to, to speak bad about people. I mean, that's the reality. When someone upsets you, the first thing you want to do is uh, go and tell everybody uh, how bad that person is. But that's not the way of Islam. The way of Islam tells us, speak good or remain silent. So we have to train ourselves to be in that situation uh, where we can control ourselves. And I understand, uh, especially with the sisters, and uh, I know it happens with the brothers as well. Uh, let's take this call before I get in too, too much trouble there. Uh, sorry? Sister Neshwa from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum, sister. alaikum, salam, Go ahead, sister. Uh, please, uh, we, I hope you give us um, a practical tool uh, for the problem of backbiting uh, and how to make uh, a real repentance from it. Thank you. Jazakhi Allahu khair. Okay, inshallah. Anything else there? No? Okay, Jazakhi Allahu khair, sister Nashwa. And uh, seriously, uh, as I was saying before uh, the call there, is that I, I know with the sisters that... It, it gets carried away sometimes, uh, but also with the brothers, so let's not uh, be too unfair there. But I know once the sisters get chatting there, uh, that the tongues start to wag. And we have to try and control that, sisters. Uh, also, brothers, we have to try and control this. Uh, we have to be aware that uh, just one word can place us in the hellfire for 70, 70 seasons. And I don't think any of us would want to be in there, so we've got to control ourselves in that situation. Uh, what I'd like to do is, uh, some uh, sister asked a question yesterday, and it was a very interesting question, uh, Sister Habiba from Norway. And Sister Habiba was mentioning, and this is something we can all listen to and benefit from. Uh, now, Sister Habiba was saying that uh, she had a miscarriage. Uh, may Allah have mercy upon her and help her to a, to a better recovery, speedy recovery. Uh, she has said that uh, sh she had a miscarriage, and... Uh, and that miscarriage was about uh, six weeks or seven weeks. Okay, now uh, she's asking about fasting. Now, the ruling on that is that if a woman, if a woman has a miscarriage and the bleeding, the bleeding that follows, if it is less than 80 days, if it is less than 80 days, then that blood is not counted as nifas. Uh, that's not counted as the, the post-mortem bleeding. Uh, so in fact... Uh, she can, she should, and and could, if she's healthy enough, to continue praying and to continue fasting. And if she happened to miss any of those days, that those that those days she would have to make up fasting, but not praying. 
uh, the prayer doesn't have to be made up if she did miss some days. And that is because the Prophet ﷺ, uh, when a woman came to him who had what's called istihada, she was in fact, uh, she in fact had uh, constant bleeding. That the Prophet ﷺ did not tell her to repeat the prayers that she had missed. So what the situation is with the sister is that if there is a miscarriage and it's before 80 days and uh, there, there is of course blood when the, when the miscarriage happens that blood is not post-mortem blood that blood is not nifas so she's actually continuing her prayer or her fasting if she's w well enough if she's, if she's capable uh, physically to do so uh, but she, she doesn't become in a state of impurity uh, that's what the sister was asking yesterday. So that's a very important point and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward her. And I was mentioning before that uh, in fact we had people calling in yesterday uh, asking about how do I pray. And we put up on the Facebook today, we put up a couple of videos on how to pray uh, properly. And wallahi, this is magnificent. This is great that people are asking these questions. Uh, and uh, alhamdulillah, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you because uh, sometimes you might feel shy. You might think, well, you know, I feel a bit shy to ask this question. But don't feel shy. These questions, uh, anything that will help you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there's nothing that's going to help you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than your prayer. So uh, we put this up on the, on, the, on the Facebook there and we actually had a sister who, uh, is, who has said that she is intending to become a Muslim. So inshallah she does, and I know she's watching as well. So uh, sister, don't, don't take your time there. Don't, don't leave it too late uh, if you believe that Islam is the truth and enter into Islam. Let's take this next call. Brother Abdul Fatah from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Go ahead, brother. Your line's a bit crackly there, but go ahead, brother. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. Go ahead with the question there, Abdul Fatah. Hmm. Oh, it looks like the lines are terrible, uh, Brother Abdul Fatah. So uh, give us a call back or... Uh, send us through to the Facebook, no problem. We'll try our best to get back to you. We do have a lot pending, but we'll try to get back to anyone who sends it through. Uh, and I was mentioning to the sister out there or anyone out there who's been contemplating about entering into Islam, don't wait. If you believe that Islam is the truth and you believe that, uh, that Muhammad wasallam is the messenger and you believe in one God, and you believe that there's only one deity of worship except for Allah, uh, only one di deity of worship, and that is Allah, don't wait. Don't wait too long. Let's take this next call. Sister Fatima from uh, Gambia. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Go ahead, sister. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, can you... Uh, repeat that, sister. I couldn't catch that. Repeat that, please. Well, we pray to Allah to reward you immensely for your good work you're doing. And we hope you repeat the program again after, after the Ramadan, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Amen, amen, inshallah. Thank you khair. very much. The program is really inspirational. We thank you so much. We are very happy. Jazakhiyallahu khair, Sister Fatima uh, from Gambia. Jazakhiyallahu khair there. And uh, brothers and sisters, uh, tomorrow night we have more of an open night. Uh, tomorrow uh, it will be my last night live. Uh, the last episodes of Seeds of Change are actually recorded. And we've recorded them all, alhamdulillah. Uh, and we did that because of the turmoil that's happening in the country at the moment. And uh, so we had to record them now. And the last episodes uh, after tomorrow night will be recorded, uh, starting from starting from next uh, the, sat the this coming Saturday. The last week will be recorded. But there's some excellent programs, excellent reports, uh, excellent shows uh, that we have in fact uh, recorded. And uh, it'll be the same, but just without the questions. Uh, uh, so, but tomorrow night we'll have a little bit of an open night. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit more openly. Anyone who wants to call in, 
uh, anything they want to say about the program. Let's take this next call. Brother Musa from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Musa. Okay, we seem to have lost Brother Musa there. Uh, sorry about that, Brother. But inshallah, try to give us another call. If you can't get through on the line, then send it through on the Facebook. Uh, we will try very hard to, to get your questions answered. Uh, alhamdulillah, there were so many great questions yesterday. Uh, so many questions. Uh, we have a call coming through now. Uh, oh, sorry, no, that's the Facebook. Sorry, we have the Facebook up on the television. Uh, so sign up to our Facebook. If you haven't signed up already, uh, join up to the Facebook. And uh, we have some small dawah things there. And also you can ask questions. Uh, but just uh, sign up to the Facebook. The Facebook, my brothers and sisters, there's two for Sheikh Zainuddin Johnson. Uh, the one that you're looking for is the one that has uh, the picture of myself uh, there sitting on a couch uh, from Huda TV. This is the one that we're using for the show for Seeds of Change. Uh, so join up to this one. I know some other people are joining up to the other one, but uh, join up to this one because if you want your questions answered, this is where we'll be answering them from. Uh, the other ones, we might not be able to find them. Let's take this next question. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Azza. Cut off again. Subhanallah. Qadar Allah wa ma fayla. Unfortunately, that's been cut off there, but... Uh, once again, sister, if you can't get through, uh, then send it through on the Facebook. Uh, one of the other questions that was asked, uh, which might benefit people around the world, was, uh, was about the asthma spray. Uh, does the asthma spray, uh, I think you all know asthma, asthmatics, they have to take like a puffer, like an inhaler. Uh, does this medicine uh, break your fast? That was a question from one brother from Gambia, Barakalafik, and the answer is no, it doesn't. Uh, because it goes into the lungs and it doesn't go into the stomach. Uh, and that is the fatwa from Ibn Uthaymeen about the asthma sprays. So, uh, so th okay, let's take this next call. Sister Khadija, Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I wanted to ask a question. On the day of judgment, when we all die, inshallah, and go to Al-Jannah, what will happen to all the animals? What will happen to the animals? What will happen to all the animals? Oh, on the okay. day of judgment, yes. On this earth. Okay, inshallah. The animals, uh, Khadija, how old are you, Khadija? Okay. The, the animals of this earth, uh, they're animals, so they won't be judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there will be many animals uh, in the paradise uh, if you want them to be. Uh, if you make it to the Jannah, you can, have, you can ask for whatever you want. Whatever you want, you can ask for and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you. In fact, everything that you can think of and more and more. This is the beauty of the paradise. Uh, you... you you try hard to think of the, the thing that you want most there. And uh, you'll find things that are more, more than what you want there. That is the beauty of the paradise. So uh, as for the animals, there will be animals in Jannah. Uh, whether they're the animals from this earth, uh, I, I don't believe so. Wallahu alam. But uh, uh, there will be animals. If you, if you, you can have anything you want, sister. Anything you want in paradise. Just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. Let's take this next call. Brother, uh, brother Abdul Fattah is back from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Go ahead with your question there, brother. Wa alaikum salam wa What I wanted to know is uh, if I had, what I give her a kiss on the cheek, does that nullify my uh, wudu? If you have a, uh, who are you kissing, brother? Who are you kissing on the cheek? If I have wudu, if I have a blue shirt. Yeah, and who do you? Who did you kiss? You, your wife? wife. You, you mean your wife? Yes. Okay, inshallah. I'll, I'll answer your question now. Do you have another question? 
Okay, inshallah. The question about uh, breaking the wudu, uh, the answer to Abdul Fattah is no, that doesn't break your wudu. Uh, we'll, we'll get into detail a bit on that. Uh, let's take this next call first. Sister, Um from Gambia. Assalamu alaikum, sister, from the Gambia. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, sister. Share, I love you for the sake of Allah. Ahabbaki Allah, Allah, the Ahabbani. I love you for the sake of Allah. May Allah love the one who loves me for the sake of Allah, sister. And I love all the brothers and sisters for the sake of Allah, wallahi. Especially our brothers and sisters. Thank you. Our brothers and sisters in the Gambia. In fact, on the Facebook, we can see, we can see where people, people who are joining. We can see where they come from, uh, and, and it has a list. And the Gambia is well up there, uh, uh, up on the top of the list uh, of the people. Nigeria is, of course, first. Uh, Saudi Arabia is coming in second. And, uh, well, alhamdulillah, it's, it's really wonderful to see uh, brothers and sisters from all around the world uh, trying to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wallahi. Trying to, to, to get closer to Allah, trying to fix a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, let's take this next call. Brother Nadaz from Kurdistan. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Uh, hello, assalamu alaikum, Mr. I just wanted to ask uh, about uh, the, the card. I mean, if I've got a house of my own and it's uh, fire land, do I have to pay any of the card of that? That's all I wanted. I didn't catch that, brother. Can you, can you repeat that, please? Can you repeat that, please, brother? Uh, I mean, uh, I've already got a house for myself. You bought uh, And I've got a uh, six land. You bought a house for yourself. Uh, I, I understand that. I think you're asking, do you pay zakat on that? No. Uh, if you're living in it, no, you don't pay zakat on that. But uh, if that's not the question you asked, then send it through to the Facebook, brother. We couldn't quite catch everything that you said there, but uh, inshallah, uh, send it through to the Facebook if you, couldn't, if you couldn't get that one. Now, the brother who's asking about kissing his wife, does it break the wudu? Uh, it is known in the madhab of Shafi'i that uh, touching a woman breaks the wudu. But there is conditions on that. First of all, the touch has to be skin upon skin. Second of all, it has to be from a person who is not from, from their mahram. Uh, so your wife is you're obviously the mahram for your wife. So that in that, it will not break your wudu. Okay? And that is in the madhab of Shafi'i. Uh, and that is from the verse of the Qur'an, uh, uh, okay, that, even if you touch, uh, that if you touch women, uh, and Imam Shafi has taken that stance with, with that uh, ruling, and uh, so it has to be skin on skin, and it has to be a, a, a woman who is not from your mahram. Uh, also, it has to be uh, a woman who is balig, uh, who is a, a certain age. Uh, but apart from that, uh, no, it doesn't break your, wud your wudu. And uh, kissing your wife will not break your wudu. Uh, giving her a kiss on the cheek is fine. In fact, we should do that more often with our wives, <laughs> inshallah. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, we have... Um, Okay, we had Nadaz. Uh, getting back to, uh, the, okay, we had the question on the asthma spray. So, inshallah, I hope that everybody uh, uh, passes that information around. Because uh, this is something that is confusing. Uh, so, pass the information around. Whatever you hear, whatever you learn, spread it around. Uh, even if it is one verse, uh, then, then spread it. Spread this deen. Spread this way of life. Let's take this next call. Brother Amir from KSA. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Uh, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Yes, um, I have a question. Like if a person, like I know this person in Ramadan, like if they miss one salah, you know, from Zohar to Asar, maybe they don't pray. So I know the fast is not valid. But I mean, is this person a Muslim if he deliberately like misses a whole salah from like Zohar to Asar? Uh, is he missing one salah or is he missing his salah always? One salah. One salah from Zohar to Asar, he misses it. Is he a Muslim? I mean, I know his fast is not valid. His fast is out. Mm -hmm. Does he remain a Muslim? 
Yeah, it depends. It depends on why he missed the salah. If he says he doesn't have to pray, he's better than that. Then no, he's not. But uh, if he lazy, just missed just it, lazy. if he missed it out of laziness, uh, then yeah. no, he he'll still remain a Muslim by missing one salah. But in fact, he'll be punished severely in the day of judgment if he doesn't make it up. So advise that person. Oh, but he remains a Muslim. Uh, he yeah. is. He's a Muslim. Uh, if he's just missed one and then is continuing, yeah. that's, that's not considered tarak salah That's not considered he's left salah completely. And if someone who's left salah completely is that he doesn't pray. Maybe he prays on the day of Eid only, like many people, astaghfirullah. And uh, this is, this is tarak salah But this person, if he misses one salah, uh, he's an athim, a very big athim. Yani he's going to get a very big sin. And uh, it's one salah, four rakas. Yani subhanallah, Pay it back. Pay it back. I mean, you, you, you try, you, you're dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here. Uh, tell the brother to pay that salah back. And he, all he has to do is just repeat it at any time now. And then he'll be saved from the hellfire. But if he doesn't pay it back, then more than likely he's going to be placed in the hellfire. This is a very dangerous thing, brothers and sisters. Leaving the salah, subhanallah, Allah created us so we could worship him. If we do not pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is the use of us on this earth? What is the use of us on this earth if we are not praying to, if we, if we cannot even pray, if we cannot even prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It, isn't this why shaitan was, was uh, banished from, from, the, uh, from the Jannah? Isn't this why shaitan is never allowed in the Jannah because of his kibr, because of his arrogance? Subhanallah, brothers and sisters, uh, leaving the prayer is arrogance. Whether it's laziness or whether it's arrogance, it's still going to put you in the fire. You're going to go to the hell fire for leaving the prayer, and that's a reality. There are the, many scholars who say that leaving the prayer is that khalas, you, you're no longer a Muslim. You're not buried in the Muslim graveyard. You're not washed. We don't wash your body. We don't pray the janazah on top of you. Subhanallah. This is the reality of, of, of the madhab of Imam Ahmed. And this is, this is something that has been done throughout the years. That people who say they're Muslims, but they don't pray, they're buried in the graveyard of the Christians and of the Jews. Subhanallah. Do you want to be in there? You want to be buried in there? La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Iyakum, iyakum, ya ikhwa. Yani beware, beware my brothers and sisters. Wallahi. Wallahi, your prayer is the most important thing after your shahada. The most important thing after your shahada. If your prayer is good, then all of your judgment will be good. But if your prayer is bad, then all of your judgment will be bad and you'll be in the hellfire. Wallahi, wallahi, brothers and sisters, I, I, I think I say this every night. Be very careful. This world that we're living in today is trying to take us away. Trying to, to, to take us away. Uh, they, call it, they call it secular. Uh, and they say, they say that uh, Islam is in the house and in the mosque. But those people who say that, when you go to the house, there's no Islam there. There's nothing there. They don't pray. They don't fast. They don't have anything Islamic in the house. Haram. Everything is haram. And then you go to the mosque and they're not in the mosque. What is this? Liars. They're lying, my brothers and sisters. Islam is a complete way of life. Islam is a complete way of life, my brothers and sisters. And it is upon all of us to put everything in Islam into our lives and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us if we fall into error. But let's not go down the track. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty. Allah, ya, ya arham ar-rahimeen. Oh, you who is merciful. Oh, you who is merciful, have mercy upon us, ya Allah. Ya Allah, make us of those whose hearts are strong, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make us of those who are able to control their tongues, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive us for our bad speech that we have done, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive us for our tongues that have wagged, Ya Allah. Our tongues that have backbitten our brothers and sisters, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive us now, Ya Allah. We are repenting to you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive us for the evil speech that we do sometimes, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, forgive our brothers and sisters out there, out there who are seeking your, your happiness. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Arham al Rahimin, Ya Allah, find righteous husbands for our sisters who are righteous, who are looking, waiting, 
waiting for righteous husbands to come, Ya Allah, send them to them, Ya Allah. Send them to them so that they can have lives that are in your path, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, so they do not have to fall into error, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, give them patience. Give them patience, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help our brothers. Our brothers who are seeking, seeking wives, Ya Allah. Help them to, to find righteous wives, Ya Allah. Righteous mothers, so that they can be the mothers of their, of their children in the future, Ya Allah. So that they can bring the Ummah, bring the Ummah of Islam, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Anta Arham al Rahimeen, Anta Qadirun ala kulli shay, Ya Allah, Anta Qadirun ala kulli shay, Ya Allah. You are able to do all things, La hawla wa la quwwata illa bik. May peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, that's all we have time for tonight. Until tomorrow night, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan is here. Change. Seas of change.